you know, sometimes we think of organization in this as these standalone things. They just are kind of an inanimate object. They, they're out there on their own uh, and the rules are totally separate for them. But the truth is organizations, just like people in a sense, exist in a community. And, and so there's a lot of overlap between where that organization operates and, and what their goals are and those of the community in which they uh, are surrounded and, and which they serve. So, um, so really when we're talking about something like corporate and social responsibility, we're talking about where that overlap is at, what obligations do organizations have within their community? Uh, you know, in the same way that communities may have in some sense, an obligation to the organizations and supporting them, but what is the obligation is that that's going to be the focus of our topic today is what is the obligation of an organization, any organization, a company, a nonprofit, an NGO, anything at all. What is the obligation of that organization within the community that they serve? And that's where we exist in the sense of corporate social responsibility. So that's what we're going to talk about in our discussion today is, is the idea of corporate social responsibility, what the uh, obligations of organizations are here and, and how we might enact those more effectively. So first of all, just a brief definition of corporate social responsibility or CSR as it's sometimes known, the voluntary actions taken by a company to address the economic, social, and environmental impacts of its business operations and the concerns of its principal stakeholders. So there are a couple of things we're going to break down here. First of all, these are voluntary actions. These are not things, we're not talking about things that are mandated by the government or by the corporate charter or anything like that. These are voluntary organizations take, or voluntary actions taken by those organizations um, to fulfill these kind of obligations. And they address economic, social, and environmental impacts of both the business operations and the concerns of its principal stakeholders. So we'll, we'll break down what we mean by that. Uh, and, and the fact that it does impact uh, the business operations and the profitability of an organization. Uh, but we also have to be concerned with the principal stakeholders. And so what are stakeholders, who are stakeholders? We're going to, we're going to dig into that a little bit more, but this is where we're coming from. When we talk about CSR, this is what we mean. The voluntary actions taken by a company to address the economic, social, and environmental impacts of its business operations and the concerns of its principal stakeholders. So when we talk about CSR, we're going to approach it specifically from the public relations aspect. And, and so we need to look at what's known as the triple bottom line. Sometimes you hear people say, well, the bottom line is this. And most of the time they're talking about profitability. Does the company make money? But the truth is there are three bottom lines that we need to be concerned with. Um, the first is people. We, I mean, as organizations, we, we exist to kind of serve our publics, right? I mean, you know, the, the in essence, either you're there to sell some something or some service to something to the people, or you're there to serve the people in a more like a, a service oriented way. If you're a nonprofit or whatever, but, but there are people involved, no matter how you cut this up, no organization exists or has any kind of function really without the, uh, without people at its core. So we need to be concerned with who are the people that are involved in our organization? Who are the people being served by our organization? And, uh, and what's the bottom line there as far as the people that we're serving and how that impacts the efficiency and the effectiveness and the overall profitability of the organization in general. So, so we need to be concerned with people as part of our bottom line. We also need to be concerned with the planet. We have an obligation to our planet, whether that's again, locally or globally or, or and or both, right? We exist on this, this hunk of rock. And, uh, and so we have an obligation just like we do when you're a homeowner, you have an obligation to take care of your home and, and, uh, you, you care for your yard and you care for the upkeep of your, uh, neighborhood and, and the, the people around you, you know, you have to be concerned with that because it affects their property values and it's all interconnected. We have an obligation as organizations to look out for our planet as well and make sure that we are being environmentally responsible and being good stewards of the resources that we're being provided by, by the earth and by, um, by all the, the, um, the, uh, items that we pull from it and that we use around us. So we have an obligation to the planet as well. Every organization has that as part of their bottom line. So those are the first two, the people and the planet are the first two parts of the triple bottom line. And the third is profit. Now, remember that no organization, first of all, exists without um, at least breaking even. Right. Even nonprofits doesn't mean no profit. Uh, it means they're not there to, to, uh, to specifically to incur profit, but, uh, but, but they can't very well exist without no money coming in. Very few organizations can exist without any kind of profit whatsoever, without some sort of income. So they have to be concerned with that at the bottom line. And, and when you're talking about 
corporations. I mean, as much as we want to say, you know, this company is you know, ought to do this and ought to do that, their bottom line is if they're not making money, they're not going to be able to serve anybody. It's sort of like when you think about when you're on an airplane, if you've flown on an airplane, they give you that spiel at the beginning and talk about how if the oxygen masks deploy, you should put yours on first and then put your child's on if you have a child traveling with you. And that's because if you're fiddling around with the kid's mask and you can't get it on and you're losing oxygen and then you pass out before the kid's mask is on, you're going to be no good to anybody. You're dead weight then, right? So, so you need to put yours on first and then focus on putting the child's mask on. We have to, as organizations, we have to, first of all, be concerned with, okay, are we able to pay the bills? Are we able to keep the lights on? Are we able to pay our employees? Are we able to, to do these things and make money? We have an obligation as an organization and as a business to make sure that we have as much coming in as we have going out, if not more, right, to, to benefit the stockholders. And, and depending on what, uh, what model of organization you're using, you may have that obligation as well. So uh, we have to be concerned with profit. It's naive to say that, well, we just aren't going to pay any attention to profit. Profit has to be there, has to be there in the mix, but that's why we have this triple bottom line. All of these things need to be considered. We can't totally exclude any of them. We have to be concerned with developing all three of those in the bottom line. That's what responsible organizations do. And so uh, socially responsible and corp you know, corporations, so CSR, will be concerned with all three of these things in the triple bottom line, the people, the planet, and the profit, uh, all and how they intersect and, and are affected by that organization. So if we narrow in a bit more on how does this, uh, you know, how is this affected by public relations or rather how is public relations affected by all this? Public relations in CSR comes down to knowing your publics, identifying and managing opportunities, counseling executives, and publicizing those results then. So when we think about knowing your publics, we talk about that a lot in public relations. Who are you serving? Who are you trying to reach? Who is, you know, your target audience here? Um, who can we have the most impact on? And uh, and so who are we focusing on? So we have to know our publics. And knowing our publics and corporate sp social responsibility means who is affected by this organization? If you're running a factory, who is the, who's the neighborhood that surrounds you, physically surrounds you? Who, who's around you? You got to be conscious of your neighbors in that way. Who are your competitors? Who are your customers? Who are your, these people that are all affected? Who are your employees that make up your, your organization? So you have to know your publics and know who we are serving. Who are we trying to be socially responsible to and for? We have to know that in advance. We got to identify those publics. That's always an important aspect in any facet of public relations, but certainly here in CSR as well. We need to know our publics. Then we have to understand that the public relations can help identify and manage these opportunities. If you just on the most basic level, look at, you know, when, when nonprofit organizations go to a big company in the area for donations, most of the time they're going to be dealing with somebody in that sort of public relations role. Even if they don't have that title of public relations, that's still part of their function in essence in that organization. So every PR person has to know and anybody engaged in this has to be a PR person really in the sense that they have to be able to identify and manage those opportunities, recognizing first of all, who your public's, what's important to them, what issues are important to, uh, to your organization, as well as to your uh, constituents there, both employees and, and neighbors and so forth, identify what those opportunities are and that you can get involved in and can, can have a hand in and can have an impact in and then manage those. You can't say yes to everything. So you've got to be able to manage those opportunities as well. Then we also have the role of counseling executives. Uh, a lot of times the, the role of PR is to, to take that broader look and say, okay, this is going to be good for our organization. It's going to be good for the community as well and good for, for the planet or whatever, but this is going to be good for our organization and be able to explain why to executives, be able to explain to executives, this is how this serves not only our publics and not only our community, but, but our organization as well. This is how this is a win-win for all of us. And then we do need to be able to publicize those results. And sometimes people are like, oh, no, you shouldn't do that. You sh we should be more modest than that. But the truth is, if you're doing something good as an organization, it's not only good for your organization to let people know, but it's good for whatever effort you are serving uh, to, to let that organization or to let the community know that, hey, we're working on this and there's an effort going on behind this and, and we're a part of it. Um, so there's all kinds of reasons that you should publicize your results in effective ways and not just plaster it all over the place and not just look for all the credit. But, but there's a lot of benefit for all sides when we can effectively publicize those results as well. So that's a role of public relations in CSR as well. So 
as you can see, public relations is involved in a lot of different areas in, in, uh, in corporate social responsibility. We have a lot of different functions to serve there. So we need to be involved in all of these things. Something we've talked about before is the, the, uh, just, few, you know, within the last few minutes is the centrality of stakeholders and stakeholders are the various individuals or groups who affect or are affected by an organization. Okay. So um, we can look at a variety of different groups that make up um, who we are as stakeholders, right? Um, so there are, for example, societal stakeholders, people who are, in, you know, from our society who are impacted by this, are the communities I've mentioned that we, the, where your business is located, government agencies that are impacted by or that impact your industry. Um, the media is part of your societal stakeholder. They have an interest in knowing what's happening and, and what you're doing, how you're responsible for it. Nonprofits in your area, nonprofit organizations that are partnering with you, the, with you for certain efforts can be a part of that. Uh, NGOs or non-governmental organizations, meaning uh, nonprofits that, that seek to um, serve larger efforts outside of the government. That meaning they're not controlled by the government, but they're, um, they, they sometimes fulfill a role that we might associate with the government in terms of providing mass relief to, to an area or something. So uh, all of these are societal stakeholders uh, and our broader society as a whole. These are the folks who in part have something to, to gain or something to lose or, or are impacted by um, our uh, efforts and conversely that we are impacted by them as well. So there are societal stakeholders. There are also organizational stakeholders, people within the organization, directors, executives, employees, members um, that are affected by all this. So and that have an impact on this. We're drawing on these folks for their for their impact and, and putting them to work for this. But they are also affected by what our organization does. So they are certainly stakeholders in our organization. They're, they're critical stakeholders uh, that come from within our organization. And then also not to be left out, but there are economic stakeholders. There are our customers that we need to con be concerned with, our creditors, the people who depend on us to make money so that we can uh, benefit them as well. Our competitors are impacted by what we're doing. Um, so they are also stakeholders in our organization, our suppliers and distributors. So the, 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 uh, the, the, the items that we have coming in and going out the, to, to produce this product or, or provide this service in unions, if that's a part of your organization, those are all economic stakeholders. They have an economic stake. And, you know, again, that profitability um, aspect of the triple bottom line. These are people who are, are going to be affected and affect us economically um, by um, these things. So we have to be concerned with all of these different kinds of stakeholders, organizational, economic, societal. They all are impacted by what we're doing and we are conversely impacted by what they are doing. This is an open system, right, where uh, it's not just closed off and we only affect ourselves and we're only affected by ourselves. Almost every organization has these, uh, this open system where it's affected by things that are going on outside of it and also then has an impact on things outside of it. So there are lots of different stakeholders and they're a really important part of, of, uh, of what we do um, as an organization. Okay, so let's talk for a minute about how we practice and put into practice corporate social responsibility. How does this show up in our organizations? What are some ways that we can enact corporate social responsibility or CSR? So one of the ways that we can do that is through direct cause promotion. Uh, you may be familiar with the Subaru Share the Love um, uh, events and things that they do. And so basically, this is a choice that Subaru has made to support a few specific organizations, including some that are close to my heart, pets. I always love when they have their pet commercial on uh, and they're supporting pet causes. I think that's very important. So to me, that's, that's significant. That, that says something to me about Subaru, about something they've chosen to do to promote that cause, to, to get involved in that cause financially, but also in terms of marketing and tie it into their organization. They've decided that's part of their organizational ethos. And this is what they want to be involved in. This is one part of what they want to be known for and what they want to share with their uh, audience who's seeing their, their ads and things. So you can get involved in direct cause promotion then with something that's important to, to you as an organization or whether it's directly affected or not or directly connected or not. I mean, pets aren't necessarily directly connected to Subaru, uh, but at some level, somebody has decided this is an important cause and we want to be involved in that. So um, they've gotten involved in that kind of cause promotion where they're, they're providing money and resources and marketing and all kinds of things to this cause and, uh, and, and, and getting involved in the promotion of that cause. 
You also have just more specifically direct corporate philanthropy. It is where you see those big checks, right? Those big checks come out. An organization gives out a big check to, to, to a nonprofit or something or to a cause uh, because they believe in that cause or because somebody's asked them for that money or and they want the publicity from it or whatever. But for whatever reason, you know, sometimes companies will donate money, which is great. I mean, they have some money. Most organizations have money set aside for this. So, um, so you know, I've been involved in lots of nonprofits that have been supported by many, many community businesses, some local some national and and, uh, and global, and, and they all uh, are typically very generous with this. So corporate philanthropy is another area of corporate social responsibility, ways to give back just directly financially, again, you know, economically give back to your community or to a cause then. You can also get involved through community volunteering. I'm really pleased to say this has been a part of every job I've had. I've been amazed by this, that they set aside every organization I've ever worked for has set aside time for employees to say, OK, this amount of hours per year, we want you to go out and volunteer. Pick a, pick a cause. Sometimes they don't care what it is. Sometimes they'll have a group uh, effort, too. Right. I lived in a community uh, a few years ago that um, was affected by a tornado went through the community and the, and the community college where I was working said, okay, this day, these two days, we're not, the college is going to be closed. We'd like everybody to go volunteer and do what they can to help with this tornado relief. And so we spent two days, large groups of us you know, volunteering in whatever capacity we could. Um, so community volunteering, and it doesn't have to be after a massive event like that. Sometimes organizations just say, you know, today's going to be a day to give back. So please find a local uh, organization to, to donate your time to, or we're going to have this effort. So it could just be a cleanup effort or something. So there's all kinds of ways that people get involved in, and organizations can support that through community volunteering. And finally, another category, broad category we have is that uh, we can engage in socially responsible business practices. A lot of times you'll see these kind of logos around that indicate that an organization is fair trade certified or cruelty free or whatever, indicating that they've taken a stand uh, on a certain practice. Um, and so they are they are um, uh, they are. Uh, dedicated to um, to performing what they do within these responsible business ways, whether it's carbon footprint or it's, you know, um, organic farming or whatever it is, non-pesticide growing things. It just depends on what the organization is and what they do, but they can engage. Every organization has the opportunity to do what they can to be involved in socially responsible business practices, whether that's environmental, whether it's just, you know, for the community at large, whatever that responsible practice might be. Um, so there are different areas and different ways that we can engage in corporate social responsibility and CSR. And lots of different ways that we can do that. So there are a few different building blocks of corporate social responsibility and things that we need to consider when we're an organization getting involved in these things. We need to think about fit. Is this a good fit for our organization? Again, you know, cars don't have anything to do with pets necessarily directly, but somewhere along the line, Subaru has decided this is something that fits their corporate ethos, something that, that works for them. It's a good fit for them. And so they've, they've engaged in that, uh, that pet project. Um, so, and, and supporting pet causes. So that's a good fit for them. They've decided we've got to find an or, uh, something that's a good fit for our organization. We've got to find something that can get buy-in both from our employees and from the community at large and from all the stakeholders that we serve. Something that's going to get buy-in, right? Something that has legs, meaning it's going to get some traction. It's going to go somewhere. It's going to make a difference, um, not only in, um, you know, the, what our organization is trying to achieve, but to also with, within the, um, within the environment, within the economic impact, within those triple bottom lines, it's going to have legs. It's going to, make a difference in some way for some group of people or for the environment in some way or whatever it is, it's going to, it's going to have traction. It's going to get somewhere. We have to make sure it fits our, our, our objectives, our strategic objectives, what we're trying to accomplish as an organiz organization. It has to, it should fit into our strategic plan and our strategic efforts in some way. And then measurement, it also ought to be something that can be measured in some way, whether that's time spent volunteering or whether it's the amount of, you know, return on investment you're getting for your donation. Is this money having a, this kind of positive impact? What kind of weights can we measure the impact of this? Because we need to be able to report this out as organizations. We've got to be able to report this out and identify it to our stakeholders and say specifically, this is how we're having an impact in our community. When we're communicating um, CSR, communicating corporate social responsibility, there's a few things we need to keep in mind. And again, communicating this is a big part of our role as public relations folks. So a few things to keep in mind here. First of all, we need to be authentic. Uh, 
when we're engaging in these responsible practices or whatever, we want to avoid what's called greenwashing, which is just slapping a paint, you know, a green layer of paint on something. This comes from the environmental area where, you know, an organization will do something just to, so they can say, well, we've reduced our carbon footprint by this much, but they haven't really done anything to impact uh, overall the environment. Um, they're just doing that so they can, they can say that it sounds good, right? Uh, that's greenwashing. If there's no real impact, there's no real meat behind it, then uh, we don't want that. We want to be authentic. We don't want to greenwash. We want to um, be very uh, authentic in what we're doing and the impact that it's having. And, and so when we're communicating CSR, we want to be authentic about how we're communicating it and what we're communicating. We need to back our words with action. You know, my mom is from Missouri and uh, she grew up in Missouri and, the, and the, the state motto there is that the Missouri is the show me state. So my mom always used to say, I'm from Missouri. You got to show me. You got to show me. So back your words with action. Don't just talk about things that you're doing. Act like you're from Missouri and show them, right? Or show, you know, act like they're from Missouri, I guess, and show them. Uh, pretend they're from the show me state, right? Um, we got to back our words with action and uh, and really let people be able to, to know what we're doing, uh, but not just talk about it. We've got to actually um, do these things then, right? We also need to be transparent. We need to be transparent. We need to... Um, be clear with people what's happening and and show them not not do things in the shadows not do things that have to be in the shadows we want to be transparent say here this is what we're doing this is how we've given back and this is what that means for us and and be transparent with all these things we need to know our audience again we have to identify those publics identify those stakeholders and 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 know how to communicate with them know what we're communicating with them what's going to have impact with them right we need to create a dialogue as well. Remember, public relations is not just a one-way street. We need to create dialogue. We need to have interaction and, and let people know what they think about our efforts and and uh, and and be able to communicate with them and not just to them or at them. So we need to create that dialogue and create a space for a two-way sense of communication. And along with that, we need to listen and collaborate. We need to be able to identify what's important to our audiences and what's impacting the world around us and what people are saying about us and then collaborate with folks when that's important. Um, most things are done in collaboration with other folks. Most successful efforts can be done in partnership and, and you can rely on the expertise of others. You can provide your own expertise, but, but we can collaborate with others when we know what's, what's happening, what's going on. And finally, we need to engage our employees. Again, this is an important part of our stakeholders. Uh, and and, and so we need to communicate with our employees what's happening. We need to uh, have them be a part of this entire effort, not only in having input on what's happening, and, but being actively involved in how it's happening. And, and, uh, and, you know, so that they are a part of this, we need to engage our employees so that we have that buy-in and so that we're um, incorporating a, a very, very important uh, group of stakeholders in our organization in this effort. So as you can see, corporate responsibility has a lot to it. It's, it's at the same time very simple, but also very complex, but really just has to do with being um, a responsible part of the world around us. Just like we are as individual citizens, we have those same obligations really as organizations to be responsible in how we use our resources, how we care for those resources, how we, um, you know, benefit those around us and, and, and help our communities in whatever way we can. If you have questions about corporate social responsibility, feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that this will give you some new perspective on this important role of organizations, because it's not just about how many widgets you can make or what service you provide. It's about how we impact the greater society around us. And so that's where we, we come to these principles in organizations of corporate social responsibility and how we impact them as professional, professional public relations practitioners.